So we've been having a lot of fun with the 940 Pro Snow Goose Shotgun here from our friends at Mossberg. But I got a comment the other day in reference to the extended magazine tube and how that plays into duck hunting. Obviously it holds way too many rounds for migratory game birds. While you can't remove the tube, there is something you can do to use your 940 Pro Snow Goose for migratory game birds. We're gonna talk about that today, show you how to do it, so let's go. What's up crew, it's Chris with CloverTac. Welcome back to the channel here on CloverTac. We talk about all things firearm related and we're just gonna jump into this one. We're actually gonna start with the federal regulation and this pertains to any migratory game bird such as duck. The regulation says a shotgun is the only legal firearm for hunting migratory game birds. Shotguns must not be larger than 10 gauge. 12 gauge is of course smaller. Uh, must be fired from the shoulder, duh, and must be incapable of holding more than three shells. Now that's one shell in the chamber, two in the magazine tube, keep that in mind. Shotguns capable of holding more than three shells must be plugged with a one-piece filler, which cannot be removed without disassembling the gun, so the gun's total capacity does not exceed three shells. So today I'm gonna to show you how to build a plug for the magazine tube, the Mossberg 940, that will restrict the capacity to two rounds plus one in the chamber to get you within those federal regulatory limits. So let's take a look at a few supplies you're gonna to need to get this done. Obviously you're gonna need a wooden dowel rod and you wanna pick up a rod with a diameter smaller than the spring that is used in the magazine tube on your shotgun. You wanna make sure that fits down inside that spring and there's no obstructions. For my little project today, I don't think it's necessarily required, but I'm gonna use a couple of little rubber thread protectors on either side of that wooden dowel rod. And to secure that in place in a more permanent fashion and it kind of adhere to that one piece regulation, I'm gonna also use some super glue. As far as tools go, you're not gonna need many, but it's certainly gonna help to have a little bit of sandpaper on hand, some kind of a marking device, a Sharpie, a pencil, whatever, and some type of a little saw to obviously cut that dowel rod. Today, I'm gonna just use the little saw on my old school Gerber multi-tool. Now, this federal regulation does apply to all 50 states equally. However, the enforcement of this regulation could vary just a little bit from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. So my recommendation is if you have any questions about hunting compliance issues, reach out and contact your Parks and Wildlife Department. Now before we start on this project, obviously safety's first, gonna make sure that the shotgun is unloaded. I'm actually gonna use an empty shell here to block the chamber while I'm doing this, just so I know nothing is in the chamber now the first thing we need to do here is remove the magazine tube end cap and the spring inside. Now this is a really long spring because it's a really long tube. It's gonna be some pressure on it. It's gonna go pretty much everywhere. I would recommend wearing some eye pro if you're doing this because if that spring bounces the wrong way, it could hit you in the eye. You just wanna cover this with your hand, keep a little pressure on that cap going down. That way when you do get the threads out like so, and the uh, spring pops like it just did there, <laughs> you can kind of control everything. Set that end cap and the spring to the side. Not gonna need them at least for a few minutes. And now we need to tip the shotgun upside down. The follower will fall out. Here it is. And you'll notice it's got a cup area. So that's what we want. Now, we take a couple of shells, remember, one in the chamber, two in the magazine tube, and I highly recommend using whatever shells you're gonna use for hunting to do this measurement for the plug. I'll just take those shells and drop you two of them down the tube like so. You're gonna put that follower back in. This particular raised side goes down. And there it is. So now I'm gonna reach over here and grab my dowel rod right here. And I'm gonna run a dowel rod 
down the magazine tube. Make sure that it's bottomed out all the way. Next, I'm going to take a Sharpie and I'm going to put a little mark on that dowel rod. And this is not yet going to be the cutting mark, but it gives me a pretty close measurement. Now that we've got our dowel rod marked, it's important to keep in mind that not all shell sizes are created equally. Sometimes with shotgun shells, the crimp can vary just a little bit, not just from brand to brand and type to type, but actually within lot numbers. So my recommendation is gonna be actually back up, make this plug about an inch or so shorter than where your mark is at. And again, to do that, I'm just gonna use my old school multi-tool here. Now, once you get through sawing your dowel rod, take your sandpaper, just clean that end up a little bit. And if you don't care anything about the little rubber bumper pads that I'm gonna use, well, you can skip the next step. For this next step, I'm just gonna put some super glue around the inside of this bumper, a little bit on the end here, I think, of the dowel rod as well. I'm just gonna squeeze that bumper Keep calling it a bumper. It's actually a little rubber thread protector, but for our purposes here, it's gonna make a little buffer. And then just do the same for the other end if this is the way you wanna go. Get you some super glue down in that. Put some super glue on the dowel rod itself. Put the little rubber bumper thread protector, whatever you wanna call it, over the end. Push it down in place and there we go. Now we're going to take the shotgun we're going to tip it upside down. We're going to let that follower as well as our shells fall out. Drop the follower back in. Remember to pay attention which side goes up, which side goes down. And there it is. And now's the fun part where we get to try to put the spring back in. You've probably seen me in previous videos try to do this. It is tons and tons of fun. Before we get to the point of getting that spring all the way in though, Go ahead and start running that plug through the spring. So we want that to fall down into the tube. It may need a little bit of help getting down in there properly. Again, watch the end of that spring, but finish out getting the spring down in there. You're going to need that magazine end cap. So have that close by before you ever start this process. Again, a lot of tension on this spring. There's a whole lot of spring there to deal with. I'm going to Release a little bit into that end cap. And just slowly, meticulously work that cap down until I can get onto the threads. And then we screw that end cap in and that should do it. So well, let's test things out. Again, we had the action blocked with an empty shell. We're gonna get that dude out of there. We're still empty though, of course. So now we can check this out. Now there should be no way to get three shells in this thing so there is one remember it can hold two not three because two in the magazine tube one in the chamber is your three round limit there is number two and number three coming up this one should not fit and as you can see our plug is working great now you may be wondering how this plug affects the performance of the shotgun and we're going to demonstrate that test that out here in a second I did not mention earlier, but it's important to keep in mind that the plug we're using to limit the capacity of the tube has no bearing on how this shotgun functions. It's gonna fire the same, uses the same shells, one trigger pull, one boom, all of that good stuff. It does not affect the function of the firearm, or at least it shouldn't if it's done properly uh, in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Before we do that though, I've got three two and three quarter inch shells. Now the previous shells I was using that I measured this for were three inch. And as I said before, if you're doing this to your shotgun to try to be compliant with that federal regulation, then make sure you're using the ammo for measurement that you're probably going to use when you're hunting. Now these are a little shorter, again, two and three quarter, not three inch. But I don't think even at that, I can get three of these in the shotgun, but we're gonna see. And you can see right there, I cannot get even three, two and three quarter inch. So even if I screwed up in the morning before I went out duck hunting and I grabbed 
two and three quarter inch. I don't know why anybody would, but if I did, I still would not be getting into trouble. I would still be compliant because I can only get two in the tube and one in the chamber. Before we do some live fire testing and make sure everything works out okay, I had to run get my ear pro. Now, for those that don't know, my normal everyday wear uh, glasses here are actually Hunter's HD Gold lenses, so they can double as safety glasses as well. We're gonna load up the three inch shells here and see how they do, make sure that everything functions properly. Here we go. Of course, everything functioned. Action locked open. So let's go ahead and shoot those three two and three quarter inch shells that I brought out just as an example. Just give us a, uh, another chance to make sure the plug is working properly and everything is going to function as it should from the factory. Again, semi-auto action, one trigger pull, one boom. Nothing changes by putting this plug in. You're just compliant with federal regulations. Here we go. Again, lock back, everything ran fine, and uh, we're ready to do some duck hunting. So there you go, crew. That's how you can make the 940 Pro Snow Goose Shotgun from Mossberg compliant for duck hunting. Remember, if you have any questions, you can always drop those below. If you're looking for more content on the Mossberg Snow Goose, well, I got you covered right over here. As for this one, we are done. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. And until next time, don't forget to chain fire freedom. Yeah. <laughs>